Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Ben here, you're watching Time on Feet. In today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Brooks Caldera 5s. So I've done about a thousand kilometers in them now. I've mainly used them as a training shoe rather than a race shoe, but I have done a couple of races in them, a couple of ultra distance races, the longest being 38 miles. And I also used them predominantly in my training block of the North Downsway 50, my first 50 miler earlier this year. So I'm gonna share my thoughts, my reflections, how I found them, and hopefully give you a sense of the good, the bad, the ugly, um, some things you might wanna bear in mind if you're thinking of getting this shoe. One thing I wanted to bring up to start with was just the technical spec, which I'll pop up on the screen here. Uh, in my size, so 10.5 UK, these come up as 354 grams. So that's how much they, they weigh. And, you know, in terms of a trail shoe, that's fairly weighty. If you compare it to the Speedgoat 5, uh, which I have actually in a different size, although I'm regularly 10.5, I've got 11 in the Speedgoat 5 and it is wide fit too. It's about 25 grams difference. So these might not necessarily be your kind of speedy race shoe that you're looking for, um, but overall I think they've been a solid shoe. There's a huge amount of good things that I have to say about them, uh, which you'll hear in a moment. So I'll be reviewing the shoes in terms of four key factors. First is gonna be comfort, second durability, thirdly versatility, and then finally value. So we'll start with comfort, and overall I'd say these are a really comfortable shoe. One of the things I really like about them is how plush it is, particularly around the, the heel arch here, and, and also there's good width in them too. So I've got quite a wide foot, and if you're someone who's got a wide foot, then these are probably gonna be a good shoe for you. So there's plenty of room in the toe box. Uh, I go for my regular size here, so 10.5, uh, and I found there's plenty of room good across the midfoot too in terms of comfort and you've got a big stack on the sole too which means that you get a nice decent amount of cushioning over distance. In terms of the kind of cushioning that you get I'd say it's different from something like the Hoka Speedgoat 5s for instance or Hoka Speedgoat 4s which are my other two pairs of trail shoes that I use regularly. The way that it's different is that the sole here kind of absorbs more of the impact whereas with something like the Hoka Speedgoat 4 for instance you get a lot more bounce so that's what I'd say the difference is but you know very plush altogether, um, nice comfort across the the width uh, and yeah good materials that mean you feel well supported as you're running along the trails. The only note of caution I would give on them is that you've got to be careful with the lacing. So sometimes if you lace up and you, you pull the laces here, you can get a bit of a pinch point along the top part of your foot. So what I have to be careful to do whenever I put these shoes on is kind of adjust the lacing here, tighten it in the lower parts of the lacing and then tighten it at the top. Otherwise, if you're running for a number of miles and you've only tightened it towards the top, it can be that it pinches a bit uh, just across the top of your foot. So that's something to look out for. So secondly, durability. Uh, overall, I'd say the durability of these is very good um, because I've taken them over a thousand kilometers now and I know that people are quite divided in terms of what they say on how long you should use a pair of shoes for, but it seems like the level of support that they've given over those a thousand kilometers that I've done in them has been really good. And in fact, if I think about the cushioning in particular, then that really hasn't changed over the thousand kilometers or so that I've used them for. There's a bit of wear on the bottom, as you'd probably expect. Uh, so there's only small lugs on here. There's not kind of hugely deep or aggressive lugs on the Brooks Caldera 5s. Uh, I've got mainly wear across the, the top, so the, the front part of the shoe uh, on some of the lugs. You can see they're worn down around here, so around the mid front part, and then also a bit on the heel too. The other most significant part of wear that you'd see on the shoe is this bit here, and I'd say this is a bit of a red flag for me on the shoe, the durability of the upper. So on both, I've had to have the holes here sewn up. I think initially this snagged in a bramble and the hole just got bigger and bigger and I've sewed it up a couple of times, uh, but it's continuing to come open. I think that's gonna be the, the thing that spells the end of this shoe for me, and maybe why I won't use this for another, you know, 100, 200 miles, because I can't necessarily rely on the upper. And of course, once that starts wearing out, the, the whole way that the, the top fits around your foot is gonna change, and it could mean that you get blisters or things like this. So that's one thing I would say, and, and I've got it on both of the shoes too. So 
hole on each one. I'm just going to take off the other ones so you can see this. So I've got it on there as well. And yeah, that is something definitely to look out for. So great durability on the sole, uh, generally in terms of the materials, but just to look out for tears on the upper, that might be something to consider. Uh, the other place where there's a bit of wear is just in the heel cup, so towards the back here, which you probably would expect. I mean, it's not, it doesn't, doesn't really mean that the support is is too diminished overall but that's just something to look out for there as well so a bit of wear on the heel so the third thing to think about is versatility and I would say that the place where the Brooks Caldera 5 really excels is as a kind of road to trail shoe and that's because the lugs I mentioned a moment ago on the bottom they're not too aggressive so it means that if you're running along the road you're not going to be wearing them down too much and if I think about the thousand kilometers that I've run in these probably around maybe 200 kilometers of those was on the road uh, if I was maybe going on the road a bit to get to trails or if I was running on the trails and there was a road section for a bit and then I was back on the trails after so yeah probably a good 200k on on the the road and overall they're, they're good for that the point I would say where they're not good as a versatile shoe is if you're trying to run really muddy trails that really is where the Brooks Caldera 5s wouldn't do so well because of those small lugs you'd probably want some lugs that are a bit more aggressive on the bottom to help you grip and deal with the challenges of muddy conditions so fourth thing and final thing to think about is value and this is a tricky one because as I've said in my previous videos I tend to think that almost all trail shoes are ridiculously overpriced um, the Brooks they retail at 120 pounds in total and yeah I think for what you get they are probably good value um, because you can get you know, a decent amount of mileage in them the only thing to consider would be the upper but I've got a thousand K out of them which is not too bad at all for a, a pair of trail shoes so I think because of that because the durability the comfort as well the quality of the materials overall then yes they are a good value shoe and I know that in the US they're doing some deals on them at the moment which means you can get them cheaper at a kind of reduced price um, I think they were selling for about $100 so certainly for $100 I think excellent value for £120 uh, or the equivalent in US then I'd say fairly good value so those are my thoughts on the Brooks Caldera 5s overall a very reliable workhorse shoe a little bit of versatility there with a the kind of road to trail thing though you might want to watch them on very muddy conditions uh, you might want to go for maybe a shoe with more aggressive lugs if you're thinking about you know running serious serious mud um, but yeah overall fairly good value and I might consider getting another pair to go into my rotation maybe not for racing because as I said earlier on they're, they're not the lightest of shoes but certainly for doing those longer easy miles so I hope you found the video useful like it if you did and do consider subscribing for more videos like this one